Complete cortical removal in 30 seconds or less using J. Canyon Irrigation. Steve Dewey, Colorado Springs, Colorado. Pertinent to this video, he has no financial interest in J. Canula's BSS or 5ML syringes. He does, however, have an intense dislike of cortex, especially the residual stuff. Finding motivations for changing cortical removal techniques can be difficult. Perhaps one is satisfied with the inconsistencies of automated INA. Or perhaps you have tried a different method of cortical removal only to have a near vitreous experience. I would like to invite you to take a McIntyre Bing Horse J cannula 26 gauge, attach it to a 5 ml lure lock syringe filled with BSS. Take the tip of the cannula, place it against the capsule, and irrigate the residual cortex after removal of the nucleus. This very simple technique is very safe to the capsule, involves inexpensive instrumentation, whether disposable or reusable. It typically involves fast cortical removal and efficiently fits into any surgical technique. The thoroughness and reproducibility of this technique have made it my procedure of choice in over 4,000 cases over the last 13 years. January 5th, 2005. I pass the FACO handpiece to my staff. They in kind pass me the J cannula attached to the 5 ml syringe. I place it against the capsule and begin irrigating, sweeping it from side to side within the confines of the capsular bag. The cortex typically swirls within the capsular bag and then out of the incision. 25 seconds after nuclear removal, in 14 out of 16 cases, the cortex was gone. Two cases required standard irrigation aspiration to remove the cortex from the anterior chamber. Why do we have residual cortex? Could this be a failure of hydrodissection? No. I believe these patients suffer from congenital hypertrophic residual cortex, or CRUD for short. All right, you're not buying it, and I know a bunch of crud when I see it. Actually, you can't blame hydrodissection because the wave passes along the fibers in a parallel fashion until it gets to the posterior pole of the lens. There, the fibers are oriented perpendicular to the wave and may be more adherent to the capsule than to themselves. That's why I believe we have a greater amount of subincisional cortex, or at least cortex opposite the initial hydrodissection wave. The J cannula has a tremendous advantage in that it can complete the hydrodissection wave, but after the bulk of the nucleus has been removed. This J cannula irrigation can dissect basically any amount of corticocapsular adhesions, whether they involve small wisps of cortex or a nearly intact cortical bowl. Our weapons of choice today are McIntyre Binkhorst 26 gauge J cannulas. These cannulas have a very slight flare to the tip so that the tip is not entirely parallel to the shaft of the cannula. This allows for greater access to the corticocapsular plane and more efficient irrigation. These innocuous looking cannulas should not be used for aspiration. Typically, one will aspirate in the subincisional space where visualization is poor. The vacuum that can be created at the tip of these cannulas can be quite impressive and may damage the capsule. These tips are also sufficiently small to fit through virtually any surgical incision. When beginning the irrigation technique, only use enough pressure to visually displace the cortex. With practice, one may start compressing the syringe with greater force, and at maximum compression, as seen on the right, the stream will shoot five to six feet across the operating room. Even this force of irrigation will not cause damage to the capsule, and I believe actually improves the efficiency of cortical removal within the confines of the capsular bag. To better evaluate the anatomy of the J cannula irrigation technique, I asked doctors David Apple and Liliana Werner to assist me in obtaining Miyake Apple views. After expressing the nucleus, we then went with the J cannula between the cortex and capsule, but without hydrodissecting first. Irrigating produced the same result, a swirling of cortex within the confines of the capsular bag, just as we see in the clinical example on the right. Histopathologic evaluation of the specimen showed that there were no remaining cortical fibers in the eye, only the normal residual layer of cells seen at the equator of the lens. I was quite pleased with this result, but just as pleased to see that this technique appears to be very safe to the zonules. Safer, I would speculate, than trying to aspirate an adherent piece of cortex and potentially stripping zonules away. I have used this technique in zonular dialyses and radial capsular tears with good success. 
February 23, 2005. I passed the FACO handpiece to my staff, and they passed me the J cannula. I will irrigate the cortex out of the incision, but I continue irrigating until the fluid is almost gone from the syringe. In this way, I power wash the visual axis, essentially eliminating cortical wisps from the posterior capsule in the visual axis. Now, five milliliters of fluid is typically sufficient, but on this particular day, I ran into two patients suffering from congenital hypertrophic residual cortex. Never mind, I forgot I'd given up on that concept. Actually, it probably is a little unfair to ask five milliliters of irrigating fluid to remove all the cortex every time. In the case on the left, we're going to see that I repeat the J cannula irrigation, exchanging the left for the right angled cannula. In the example on the right, I'm going to inflate the posterior capsule with cohesive viscoelastic and in the process express the cortex out of the incision. In both cases, the initial five milliliters was sufficient to get the cortex out of the capsular bag. February 2nd, 2005, a nearly uneventful day involving the J cannula. It is important to remember that, in my experience, 1 in 200 to 1 in 100 cases may have an iris that wants to come out and play while you're using the J cannula. It's important to recognize that iris prolapse can occur during J cannula irrigation, and simple changes to the procedure will prevent damage to the sphincter and stroma. In this particular example, I reduced the irrigation force, redirected the flow forward as I depressed the iris with the cannula. In this case, I was still able to remove the cortex from the eye without causing damage to the iris. If there was more cortex, however, I would have changed the technique slightly, and in this example, you'll see I displaced the cortex with the J cannula, but I'm going to end up removing it with the automated INA handpiece. To remove the cannula, it's important to maintain irrigation as you depress the iris with the cannula to remove the cannula without causing further damage. Small pupils and short incisions should probably have decreased irrigation pressure at least to begin with, and for Flomax patients with floppy irises and the tendency to prolapse, it should be a judgment call whether this should be done at all. December 15, 2004. This relatively small pupil demonstrates the greatest efficiency of the J cannula in that the irrigation is not dependent upon visualization for cortical removal. Despite the fact that I'm irrigating with tremendous vigor, there is no harm to the capsule. The hooking of the incision as we withdraw the cannula is not pretty, but does not result in harm to the eye. By irrigating, in this case, I was able to place the residual cortex in areas of greater visualization, thus avoiding the need to place an aspirating tip into a region of poor visualization, regardless of the manufacture of the tip. Now, hooking can become a bigger problem, and I had to go all the way back in the archives to April 2nd, 2003, or about 1,500 cases ago. I was able to successfully irrigate the cortex out with the first pass without much difficulty. It is a superior incision, and the brow changes the angle with which we use the J cannula. I noticed a number of wisps remained behind at the periphery of the lens and wanted to irrigate those out using a second pass with the J cannula. Before I got to power washing the capsule, though, I wanted to inspect the zonules. I saw they were intact. I wanted to leave them intact. So I gently withdrew the cannula in the direction I hooked the zonules and continued power washing. I've hooked the capsule twice before this in about 4,000 cases. Both of those cases did have a small dialysis, but both of those cases also resulted with in-the-bag posterior chamber lenses. In summary, J cannula irrigation fits into any surgical regimen. It can stage or replace automated irrigation aspiration techniques of cortical removal. This simple technique requires only simple, inexpensive instrumentation, and regardless of irrigation flow, is incredibly safe to the posterior capsule. For me, J cannula irrigation has proven to be very efficient, thorough, and reproducible in over 4,000 cases over 13 years. So, I wondered, would others want to use this technique? I assembled a panel, a think tank, of five top ophthalmologists and asked them that very question. Now, I didn't get much discussion, but four out of five liked the technique. What happened to the fifth? I guess I'll never know. <laughs>